fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the haughty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! their horses on the edge of a high plateau. They could see the sweeping plain below across which a train moved along the shiny rails toward a group of low rocky foothills. They watched as the train sped out of sight into a valley. Then they listened attentively as they heard the train whistle tooting frantically. Listen to that, fellow. Something must be wrong. Uh-huh. Sounds like trouble in that valley. Get down there, Prado. Move to the left. It took about 20 minutes for the two men to reach the entrance to the valley. As they turned into the valley alongside the track, the train was just pulling out of the other end as it continued its journey. The masked man and Indian rode to the place where the train had stopped and pulled rain. Move to the left. There's evidence of a holdup, Prado. Those logs tossed to one side there. Must have been piled on the tracks to stop the train. Easy, say. Let's look around. Ah, that's right. Outlaws wait behind boulders yonder, maybe. Oh, we'll look there. You're right, Toto. Boot marks show there were four or five horses waiting here. Ah, that's right. And boot marks go to tracks, then come back to horses. Hmm. Here's a strong box with a lock shot off say the holdup succeeded, and that they took the money away in their saddlebags. Ah. Them leaf trail. It is you to follow, Kimasabi. Yes, and they haven't had much of a start. Hmm. There's something else. Uh-huh. Now, what you find? The small disc of beaten silver. It's an ornament from a horse's bridle. Make him in handy. All right, let's get the horses and follow the trail of those outlaws, Toto. For a short time, the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed the trail left by the train robbers. Then, as the sun disappeared behind dark clouds and a rumble of thunder was heard, Tonto spoke. It's not good. Storm come. Wash out outlaw trail, Kimasabi. Yes. 
We'll have to give up if it rains hard. Oh, we already feel drops of rain. Here it comes. We'll have to give up for the time being and head back to our camp. Let's hurry. <laughs> Meantime, the news of the train robbery had spread through the nearby town of Redford. The train had arrived bringing several wounded men. After the sheriff had questioned the train crew and some of the passengers, he returned to his office. The storm had broken. As he hurried in from the downpour, he saw Calvin Blair, the town banker, waiting. Hi, Cal. Sure is coming down like old blazes outside. It's our luck to have a storm break and cover up the trail of them outlaws. Well, carnation, take it, Sheriff. Got to get away with new courtesy. Ten thousand dollars of it that was coming to my bank. I was just saying to Mr. Blair, it's a good thing they got it before we signed in at the bank. As it is, the express company will have to take the loss. Well, yeah, maybe so, but a few months ago, my bank did take a loss. When outlaws held up a payroll, we were sending over to the mining company at Remstone. It must be the same gang. Funny how they get to know about such shipments, Cal. Well, yeah, that's what stumps me, too. Only two of us at the bank know about them, the cashier, Bill Ames, and myself. Huh. Uh, do you reckon young Ames is trustworthy, Cal? It would be easy for him to pass the word to someone connected with that well, gang. I, I have always trusted Bill. I'd hate to feel he was doing anything like that, but... Uh, but what? Well, nothing, nothing at all, Sheriff. Hmm. Yeah. I got a feeling you do suspect Bill Ames. No, I didn't say that, Sheriff. In fact, I have no reason outside of him knowing about the shipment ahead of time to suspect Bill. You can't accuse a man of something like that, you know, without having proof. Yeah, that's right, we can't. But it won't hurt to sort of keep an eye on Bill, just in case. Bill Ames, a nice-appearing young man and cashier of the bank, lived in a small house on the edge of town with his young wife, Anna. At dusk, after the bank closed that evening, Bill hurried into the house. Anna! Supper ready yet, honey? Mom, why is it big hurry, Bill? Mr. Blair invited us to go to the Mr. Show that's in town tonight. The rain is over, and I promised we'd meet him in front of the opera house early so as to get good seats. Oh, that's wonderful. I'll hurry with supper. Then it won't take me but a few minutes to get ready. Now, you run along and wash, dear. By the time you're finished, I'll have supper on the table. <laughs> That night after the show, Calvin Blair suggested that they take Anna home and then stop at the cafe to see if there was any news of the outlaws. After leaving Anna at the house, the two men went to the cafe. Well, there's the sheriff and his deputy at the bar. We'll go join them, Bill. All right. Howdy, Cal. Howdy. Hi, Bill. Hi, Sheriff. I don't suppose there's any news, Sheriff. No. No use trying to trail those outlaws after the heavy storm, Cal. Uh, you know, I didn't expect I'd be seeing you names in here at this hour. Well, we went to the minstrel show. Sure a big crowd there tonight. I got jostled here to death before we got in the house. Oh, yeah, I was there, too. Uh, what's that sticking out of your jacket pocket, Bill? Huh? You forget to mail a letter your wife gave you, maybe? Letter? <laughs> I haven't any letter in my pocket. In fact, I haven't anything in... Uh, where did this envelope come from, I wonder? Huh. Sure is kind of thick. And the flap's just tucked in. That's strange. Now, see what's inside. Hey, man, a lot of paper money. You bills, too. I don't get this. I didn't have any that. Well, <laughs> well, $500 in new greenbacks. Well, now, see here, Bill. If that's money you should have put in the vault before you left, it's written You know to... better than that, Mr. Blair. I didn't have that in my pocket when I left the bank or my house. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't. Well, of course he didn't have it when he left the bank. I remember now. We checked the bank money together, and I put all of it away. Uh-huh. Ames, you aren't very smart, or you wouldn't have left this sticking out of your pocket. So those that could be noticed. What do you mean? Yes, explain, Sheriff. All right. I'll explain all right. The way I figure... Bill tipped off that outlaw gang about the money shipment. Why, hey, now, wait, wait a minute. I tipped in, in the crowd at the show tonight. One of them slipped this into your pocket as your payoff. Uh, Can you uh, see here, Sheriff. I'm sure you're mistaken. Bill, you must have an explanation for this money. Tell the Sheriff about well, it. I don't know anything about it. I don't know how it got into my pocket. It's brand new money. Oh, yeah, like the bills who were stolen. He must have tipped them oh, off. Right, Bill, I'm taking you over to the jail on suspicion. There's no doubt this is part of the loot taken from the train today. 
And it'll be better for you to tell the truth. But I have told the truth. I don't know anything about that money or about the gang that held up the train. I, I don't know what to say. Bill, I trusted you like a son. You and I were the only ones who knew about those shipments. Naturally, under the circumstances, I, I have to believe the sheriff is right. But I... Why, Thunder, of course I'm right. Come on, Ames. We're taking you over to the jail right now. I tell you... After the sheriff, along with the deputy and the banker, left the cafe to take Bill Ames to jail, Tonto, who had been in the cafe trying to get a line on the outlaws, slipped out the back door and rode to the camp not far away, which he shared with the Lone Ranger. Tonto told him what had happened. The Lone Ranger thought for a moment, then spoke. If Bill Ames were guilty, Tonto, it doesn't seem to me he'd be stupid enough to leave the envelope containing the money sticking out of his jacket pocket. Now, would he have pulled it out in front of the sheriff and Blair? If it contains some of the new currency. And that's what me think, Kimasabi. Me watch close. And young fella act curious when him open the envelope. You heard Blair say that he and Bill Ames were the only ones who knew about such shipments? That's right. Me hear banker say that in cafe. Oh. We're going to town right now, Toto. Here, Silver. Steady, Scott. Steady, Oh, uh, What we do in town? There are only two cells at the Redford Jail, Toto. And they're both at the back. I'm going to try to talk to young Ames through the cell window. Um, what me do? Blair's house is at the end of the main street. I want you to go to his table in back of the house and do a bit of investigating. All right, let's get going. Steady, easy, big fella. Easy, easy, fella. Move through. Move through. The Lone Ranger and Toto reached the shadows on the edge of town and stopped for a moment. Move through. There's Blair's house over there, Tonto. I'll ride up the back way to the jail. When you finish what I told you to do, meet me there in the grove. Ah. Me come there soon. Now you be careful, Kimasabi. I shall. Hurry, we have a lot to do. Ah. Adios. Adios. Get him up, scout. One sooner. beyond the bars of the cells, cast a flickering light. He pulled himself up. Inside, Bill Ames sat despondently on the edge of the cot with head in hands. The masked man called in a low voice. Bill! Bill Ames! Who's that? Be quiet. Come to the window. I... Your mask. You must be the one Easy, who... Bill, easy. I came to help you, believe me. When did you decide to go to that show? They didn't have to the bank told me. I see. Now, look, that mask. Why should I tell you? You couldn't be in a worse spot. What chance are you taking? Forget the mask right now. Did you sit near anyone who might... Between Anna and Mr. Blair. We weren't in the crowd. We got there early and came out the side. I believe you have, Bill. I have a few more questions to ask, then I'll leave. Meantime, inside the sheriff's office, the sheriff was speaking to two deputies. Hank, you stay here and keep your eyes open. Where are you and Jim going, Sheriff? News of Ames' arrest has got around like wildfire. Gang will expect we'll try to get him to talk. I've been thinking they might try to break him out tonight. Jim and I will go between the buildings and watch around back for a while. Come on, Jim, let's go. You're right, Sheriff. Move easy, like. We'll stay in the shadows near the back corner of the building. Just take turns to leave Hank in the office. Yeah, all right. Here's the corner of the building. We'll be able to make it. Hey, somebody's around here. I'll peek out. Great day. You want him just to win and talk in the beer? I'll get no. Sneak up on him and take him. Come on. Quietly, the two Normans slid around the corner, guns ready, then moved quickly up behind the masked man as he dropped from the window ledge. Reach, mister, and don't make a move. We both got you covered. One false move and you'll get a bullet. Strondo. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue. As the Lone Ranger dropped from the ledge of the cell window where he had been talking to Bill Ames, the sheriff and the deputy moved up behind him with drawn guns and ordered him to reach. The Lone Ranger immediately raised his hands and stood facing the wall of the building until the sheriff spoke again. Turn around and do it careful, mister. The moon's bright enough for us to see any move you make. Very well. Hey, look, he's mad, sir. Yeah, he's one of the gang, all right. Having him come here to talk to Ames convinced me more than ever Ames was in with him. You're easily convinced, Sheriff. None of your smart talk, mister. <laughs> we'll take you inside. I reckon between you and Ames, we ought to find out plenty. One of the crew of that train was killed, so you're both hanged for murder. You'll be lucky if the iron lifts before morning. Huh. Way he's smiling, don't look like he's much worried right now. <laughs> I'm not, Sheriff. You both hey, drop guns, quick. Uh, somebody snuck up behind us. <laughs> Better do as he says, Sheriff. You drop guns, quick. All right. All right. Drop your gun, Jim. Yeah. As the two men dropped their guns, the Lone Ranger stooped quickly and picked them up. Then he threw them into the shadows to one side. You can get your guns after we leave, Sheriff. Adios. Hey, come back. Dang, have it. Where's the gun? Uh, he went in grove. See men come round built. Good thing you did. Take his gun. Take his gun. Take his gun. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had raced straight back through the grove so that the trees and deep shadows made it easy to escape the bullets fired haphazardly after them by the sheriff and deputy. They reached a shallow stream and followed along in the water for some distance in case they were trailed later. Then they circled around and finally came back to the edge of town from the other direction. They stopped to rest the horses behind some large boulders. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Easy, sir. Easy, sir. Easy, sir. I haven't had a chance to ask what you found out, Toto. Well, me take look inside Banker's stable, King Sabi. Me use piece of candle, me carry in saddlebag. Me find riding gear hanging near stall. Well... One ornament missing from bridal. Other ornament still on bridal. And it match one you find in valley. That convinces me Blair framed young Ames. Not right. Hmm. He had those new bills to slip into Ames' pocket. He may still have the rest of that money. Toto, I'm going to print a note. And I'll tell you what to do and what to say. I hope to force Blair into a mood that will help us catch him red-handed. <laughs> A short time later, Calvin Blair sat going over some papers in the living room of his home when he heard a knock at the door. Uh, you know, who can that be coming here this late? Well, Indian, what do you want? Oh, Halloran Crail. Him say, bring you this note. Yeah, I'll step in a minute. Oh. So somebody on the trail gave you a note to bring here, huh? Isn't that right. Him say come big house, west end of town, and give silver dollar. Me bring note. Hey, let me have it. Uh, Did you read what this says? Oh, that not way Indian right. Read only Indian sign right now. Ah, well, that's all right then. What does the hombre who gave you this note look like? Oh, uh, him have cover on face. Me not know. Uh huh. Was he? Uh, Heavy set, sort of? Oh, maybe. Yeah, I reckon I guessed right. All right, Indian, you can clear out now. Ah. Hmm. You better have another look at this. We decided we want our cut tonight. Bring the cash to the hideout or something might happen. Yeah. He wouldn't sign it, but I know it was that rusty who printed this all right. He's been trying to get the other two stirred up for some time now. Indian hinted he was heavy set. Rusty wanted to keep me guessing as to which one of them actually sent it, huh? But by thunder, I'll take the money out like they want. But I'll have a showdown with Rusty this time. It'll teach him who's running things. The Lone Ranger and Tonto waited in the shadows until finally they saw Calvin Blair leave the house with a small bag and head for the stable. A short time later, they saw Blair mount in front of the stable, 
Then head out to the trail that led into the hills. He fell for Toto. There he goes. Now we'll ride along behind the buildings on this side of town until we reach the one opposite the sheriff's office. We'll go between the buildings then and come out onto the main street. And why we do that? We notice that the sheriff and his men gave up trying to trail us from the back of the jail. Their horses are still standing saddled at the hitch rack at his office. Someone will see us. They'll be sure to follow. Ah. Then we trail Blair and lead Posse to outlaw hideout. That's the general idea. All right, let's get going. We have to work fast. Easy. 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 Go on, too. We're going to A few minutes later, the sheriff and some of the posse were in his office discussing the escape of the two men they had tried to trail. Hi, Thunder boys. I should have known that masked man wouldn't be out back alone. I still get rankled when I think how they outsmarted Jim and me. Yeah, we, we didn't get far trailing them either. Man alive, it sure would be a feather in our caps if we'd been able to catch him. Yeah, right. I reckon the rest of you men might as well head for home until morning. No use in wasting time on... Holy mackerel, look! It's the two outlaws. Yeah, they're heading away. The moon's bright as day. Let's follow. No, no, what no, are we waiting no, for? No, Let's get out of here and hit them other men. This time, maybe we can cut sign on them without losing their trail. Come on! Come on! The Lone Ranger and Toto raced at top speed along the trail until in the distance they saw the outline of Calvin Blair as he topped a rise ahead. Later, in a shack set in a small secluded hollow, three men lay resting on blankets on the floor. A lighted lamp on a table to one side cast a flickering glow in the shack. Suddenly, one of them, known as Rusty, sat up and called to the other two. Hey, Wes. Mm. Back. Uh, what's the matter? Yeah, what are you... Someone's riding up. Have your gun ready. Here, who do you think it is? He's not trying to sneak up on us anyway. What? It's a boy. Yes, it's me, all right. I reckon this was your idea, huh, Rusty? What? What are you talking about? What's that? You know doggone well what it is. It's the note you sent to me by that Indian, that's what. Indian? I brought the cash like you said to. But I'm telling you, Rusty, this is the last time I'm going to take Oh, wait it. a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. I don't savvy this. Yeah, what's all the excitement, Cal? Rusty didn't send any Indian that we know of. Well, that's right. Nor any note either. Now, let me see that. Mm-hmm. We decided we want our cut tonight. Bring the cash to the hideout or something might happen. Hey, this is some kind of a trick, Cal. You mean you didn't meet an Indian on the trail? No. He hasn't been out of his shack. None of us have. Well, then who sent that note to me? I did. Reach. Hold on, Hey, look in the door. We have a masked hombre. He's got the drop on us. Well, calm down, you fool. Now get him. No, you won't. No! The light. He shot out the light. Rush him. As the light went out, the Lone Ranger flattened against the wall a moment. Then, as the outlaws moved forward into a bright beam of moonlight streaming through the windows, he could see their faces. You're the one I'm after, first player. Oh. In a few moments, the men became used to the moonlight streaming through the windows. Sam headed for the door. I'm getting out of here. Can you not leave? That's helping. Let's go, Brady. I'll grab him. This is settle you. Oh, I'm through with you yet, Blair. For a few moments in the shadowy interior of the shack, the Lone Ranger threw sledgehammer blows right and left. One of the others got to his feet, but Toto promptly felled him again. Then, under the rain of blows landed by the masked man, Calvin Blair went down and stayed down. No, no, wait, wait, no. No more now. Shut up, you. Light the lamp, Toto. I keep light without glass shade. Oh, here, lantern. He likes that, too. Great, mister. You two Indian. And last week... Great day. Look at on the floor. Hey, look. There's Mr. Blair. What's he doing here with these crooks? I reckon this masked hombre and the Indian kidnapped him. Brought him here for getting one of the gang. Young A. Yes, yes, that's it, Sheriff. He's the leader of the gang. They had a falling out over the loot. Never mind, Cal. We'll see that they all hang for what they did. Now, wait. Wait a minute. Cal Blair can't... Can't get away with that. <laughs> I wondered if you'd let him. We don't know who that masked hombre is. Oh, but Cal leads this gang. He planned to hold on. Now, hold on. You can't tell me that... Cal... You, uh, you hold on, Sheriff. Here's an ornament from a bridle that was found at the place where the train was held up. 
The sound behind the boulders where the outlaws hid their horses. Yeah, but I don't see You'll them. find that came from Blair's bridle. Oh, Blair's Blair. I fixed him with a note. He came out here bringing the stolen money in the bag there on the table. This is the new money, all right. My friend and I followed him here after getting you to follow us. By Thunder, you're the hombre we almost caught back at the jail tonight. Yes. I talked to Ames. I was convinced he was framed. Cal Blair put that envelope in his pocket. This is the gang of outlaws you've been hunting. And Cal Blair is their leader. Now, see here. You can't talk yourself out of this, mister. We'll get the truth about these others. But we're taking you and the Indian along, too. Oh, wait a minute. Does this mean anything to you? Huh. A bullet. Well, it looks like it's a silver bullet. It is. Uh, hey, maybe I... What's that Indian's name? Toto. And the name of your horse? Silver. Oh, great day. No wonder you did all this. I sure catch on now, mister. And I reckon I owe you an apology. Well, that's not necessary, Sheriff. Give my regards to Bill Ames when you release him. I'm sure you and your men can take care of Blair and his gang now. Let's go, fellow. Sheriff, why do you listen to these owl hoots? To that masked man, I give you my word. Oh, shut up. Your word couldn't stack up against his in a hundred years, Blair. He is the Lone Ranger. Oh, Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger.